Hello and welcome to this Microfocus ArcSight Smart Connectors introduction. Today's session we're going to be talking about the new S3 bucket connector for use with an AWS and we're going to look specifically at our initial release which centers around the support for Cisco Umbrella. So let's get started and have a look at how this connector actually works and how do we install it and have a look at some of the uh, results within ESM and the new Recon product. So firstly we need to install the connector itself so I've gone ahead and actually pre-configured some of these pieces in AWS because you'll know from the previous videos around some of our AWS connectors they follow a very similar flow and the same goes for this particular connector this is a connector that uh, essentially is looking for poles and looking for uh, messages from uh, AWS's SNS and SQS service uh, to understand when and be, be notified when a new file containing a comma separated file uh, with DNS information uh, from Cisco Umbrella lands in an S3 bucket and when we receive that notification we get the location and the exact file path to that new file and we simply uh, uh, pull down a copy of that file and then parse it uh, like any other uh, input into a connector and then of course it, it flows on into any product that we're looking for so it's essentially a very straightforward connector uh, once again most of the complexity actually really comes from making sure that your policies and so forth are set up correctly within AWS so uh, I've already got one that's already running but I'll run through the motions of actually just installing the connector itself and what you'll need to do to uh, make it work So when you run the setup for the first time, the connector that we're actually interested in installing is of course this uh, AWS S3. Uh, it's nothing to do with CloudTrail or anything like that. It's not CloudWatch, it's not Security Hub. This is simply a connector that is going to read files from an S3 bucket that we specify with obviously the right credentials pull it down and then parse it and simple as that so we're going to choose option one you'll notice that the only option that we have here is Cisco Umbrella DNS logs and that's exactly what our initial release actually uh, supports in terms of parsing and we'll obviously add more and more parses to this capability but the overall framework of being of polling and then pulling down from an S3 bucket and then parsing these types of events is exactly uh, what this connector is designed to do so you'll see that list grow over time so we'll go with the defaults now, as you'd expect, just like in any other uh, connector that we've built uh, for AWS, you need to obviously authenticate and tell the, tell the system, tell the connector where you're, which bucket you're going to, which region and so forth. And then from there, uh, we're able to make some progress. So let's go ahead and, and fill in this information. First thing is, of course, my AWS key. I then have a secret key. Now, keep in mind when you install these connectors, you will not see any feedback on the console. So, if you have any extra characters and so forth, it will not work. I'll choose the SQS method because I'm going to be uh, polling or uh, for for uh, messages that tell me that there's a new file ready to be downloaded. The bucket is this bucket here. And we'll go into the configuration of this very shortly. The folder name is events. So I've basically got my events being dumped into this subfolder called events. Make sure you get the region correct. 
because otherwise, otherwise uh, it will be looking for a bucket that doesn't exist in, a, in an unknown or the, or the incorrect region. So make sure that's correct. And so in my case, it's 14. And then you also want to do the same thing for the actual SQS region as well. Of course, SQS is, of course, regionally based. So make sure you get that right as well. Typically, you're going to, your SQS is going to be in the same region as your bucket uh, in most cases. You remember from previous videos, we took note of our SQS URL. This is exactly the same type of thing. And we'll go into the configuration of the AWS side very shortly. But I've made note of that. So I'll paste it in here. If that doesn't make any sense to you, it will very, very shortly. And so once you've got all the options correct, hit yes. And then from there, it's literally just a case of uh, choosing your destinations. It's So it's just a straight standard connector install. I won't go into that because I've already got one pre-configured. But if there are any problems with this setup, uh, it does a very good job of telling you when there are problems. Uh, I've had uh, an extra carriage return in my secret key. I've uh, selected the wrong region before. And so they will all give you valid uh, error messages. So just take note of what's there. So if you've, if you've got no errors there, you know it's uh, c connecting correctly to S3. So we'll leave it at that. And so I'll come, come back to the fact that I've actually got a working one here already. and I can find that under a slightly different directory. And I'm going to tail agent.log. So you can actually see these um, events being uh, parsed and polled as they become available to us. So let's just take a look now at the actual AWS configuration, because that's that's the interesting part. That's the part that will take a little bit of time, and uh, there is potential for problems. So, first thing you got to do, obviously, in the documentation, uh, you'll need to set up a user with the uh, appropriate credentials and uh, authorization to various functions. So I've shortcutted it a little bit. You don't need to have full access on this stuff. Um, I've just done this for the purpose of the exercise, but. Your user that you're that you're implementing here with the AWS key and the secret key needs to have SQS, S3, and SNS func uh, capability. So um, yes, I've got it on full access at the moment. That's not quite necessary. That's a little bit loose, but that's essentially the different services you need to actually have access to. So it's not just pulling information from S3. You actually have to be able to uh, pull the, the, the queuing services and so forth to pull down the messages. Um, so then, then we can act upon them and, and pull down the file. So be aware of that, but, but you'll know that that's very similar to the other three connectors that we've uh, shown you in demonstrations. So it shouldn't be any anything too strange there. Um, the, the most important thing is, of course, to actually set up an S3 bucket. I've got my S3 bucket here. I've called it Cisco Umbrella 123. And I've got a subdirectory called events, as we saw in the configuration of the smart connector itself. So there's nothing special there. Um, what's important here is actually creating the notification to SNS and SQS to say hey I've got a new file I need to send I'm going to send you a notification to say I've got a I've got a new file ready for parsing you can do that here under properties in the S3 services section don't be fooled that's not all that's available there you got to keep scrolling down here to the events piece here click on that and you'll see here that I've got an S3 notify for a put or a post. I'll just edit that so I can show you what's actually going on here. I've given it a name, arbitrary name, put and post. I'm not really interested in any of these other um, uh, particular actions. I just want my connector to know when a new file is there. Simple as that. Uh, I don't necessarily need to put in any prefixes and suffixes and so forth, but the, when I send a notification, I want it to go to an SNS topic, topic, and you'll have a topic here. And I've called mine a CU12345 topic. Uh, you can um, create the topic here if you wish, but I want you to be aware that by default, uh, when you create an SNS topic and a subscription to an SQSQ queue, 
it will not the S3 bucket will not have or S3 will not have access or authorization to post messages to the topic and when you when you go to click save here you'll actually get an error message saying hey you don't have permissions and I'll show you how to make sure that actually that's actually taken care of but that's all that there is to take care of on the S3 side of things. We've got a bucket, we've set up our event notification piece, uh, we can move on to the next part. The next part of course is of course the SQS piece. This is the queuing service and this is what we're effectively polling to make to, to let uh, the system know or the smart connect know that we actually have a new file ready for download. And if you remember from the previous videos, I explained that uh, within the, the message that the smart connector pulls down, it actually pulls down a JSON, a uh, very small piece of JSON, which in, contains the full file path to the new file under S3. And that's, that's the secret to it. And that's what it uses to actually bring the information, uh, bring the file down, so that it can actually parse it. So we're familiar with the idea of a queue. This is my queue here. You see how many messages and so forth are here. If you've got a particularly busy Cisco umbrella that's posting a lot of new files and so forth, obviously this message count will be higher. Um, I wanted to point out two things. One, the SQS queue that we obviously need to take a copy of and you saw that I actually posted that into the smart connector configuration and then secondly the access policy by default again this won't work particularly well unless you give uh, access to uh, the various components uh, to allow uh, SQS to send messages etc so make sure that your um, your SNS topic can actually send messages to this queue. So that's one area where you may get a permissions failure within AWS. So again, I'll stress the point that the complexity in setting these things up really is on the AWS side. Uh, the smart connector, if you've given it credentials and an SQS queue, uh, that's all we need to worry about. You'll remember also that with any uh, SQS, there is also the SNS topic. And we can view that in SNS now, we'll bring that up. And this is what's important. Uh, our SNS topic has this connection or subscription to the SQS itself. So we're all sort of set up there. It's, it's looking pretty good. Um, so we've got an S3 bucket that's sending notifications to SNS which in turn generates a message within SQS. The smart connector then pulls down that SQS message and is able to locate the file and then uh, download that file and parse it. So once we've done all that, that's, that's, we should have a working connector. So I've got a working connector and I've sort of cheated. I've actually got, I don't have access to a nice uh, implementation of Cisco Umbrella, but I've got some pre-saved events from Cisco Umbrella here in the, in this in my directory here, um, and so I can parse those uh, readily as I please. So what we'll do now is to our new product called Recon. And this is a, a unified GUI which allows us to bring together uh, Recon, ESM, and our other pieces into under a single umbrella. You notice here that I've got a pre-save search and this is a deliberate done here so we can just look at just the umbrella events and so over the last 15 minutes I'm obviously getting some real events in here. User, source address, destination domain and then the actual categorization that comes from umbrella itself. So what type of URL, what type of domain we're actually going to and of course uh, other useful information like allowed and blocked and so forth. But then what's really nice about this is I can actually um, can build out some nice content within ESM, seamlessly flick over to it from, from Fusion slash Recon. Um, if you're familiar with AC, the ACC within ESM, you'll notice that it pops up with the MITRE activity from the start. But what I'm going to do here is uh, I've just created a little bit of uh, content for Cisco Umbrella itself. I can come across here. It's a little bit squished. Easy, easily fixed, we're going to tab view, but this is essentially showing some of the different data monitors that we can very quickly uh, build out uh, from the Cisco Umbrella and events. So attacker address, 
the zone. You notice here that the AWS zone here is a private zone. So in other words, somebody within my uh, organization that is uh, uh, out in AWS is actually making these calls and, and um, uh, bringing us into giving us these uh, URL results. So here's the target DNS domain as well. Device action is where the umbrella parser actually specifies whether it's allowed or blocked. So this is a rather important one. You might like to look at something like this over time with an, with a, um, an event, uh, 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 and a moving average. Device severity is whether there's any errors within the actual lookups for the domain. And this is a no really nice little uh, breakdown of the different categories that Cisco Umbrella has told us about uh, in respects to what people are actually browsing to. So I've used some slightly modified data for my events, but this is essentially what you should be able to see in the actual events themselves. So that is a look at the Cisco Umbrella AWS connector. So this is our, again, this is our first implementation of the S3 bucket connector. And over time, you'll see more and more parses available for this type of connector, obviously, because S3 is a very, very uh, easy uh, system to actually write files to. And it's very, very, very much supported by different product vendors that are uh, within the cloud, Cisco obviously being one of them. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.